Can you tell us something about what you'll be doing here at Sight Gallery? Well, firstly, I have a great luxury of six weeks to work with, which is a very phenomenal time in a way as an artist that you can have that period and work in that way. What I'm really hoping to do is try and somehow rediscover my whole relationship with language and words because um, for me words are incredibly important but in a way they've become very dead and um, I'm trying to heal that. So you are setting yourself quite a big challenge with this project yeah. and words are a fairly fundamental part of the way we communicate life but they're not working for you somehow. For me, there's also been, there's always been a very personal connection with words and language. I, I've had a stutter. I, um, uh, I um, start to stutter now. But <laughs> I've also had periods where I've not been able to speak for two or three months. So there's been a very. I've always felt very detached from language and words. I started to become so conscious that there is something very. Um, problematic or dead in the words that we're using, you know, this fear that words like hope, words like happiness, words like love, that somehow they've been exhausted to the point that they're completely empty. But what do we have when we don't have words? And of course we have this assumption or tradition now that somehow now actions speak louder than words. But what happens if we don't have the words to cope with our actions? Everything is governed by the way we speak and communicate. If we're not talking right, is that also the implication that we're also not doing the right actions? So I'm um, trying to find a way as a long-term, probably life mission, <laughs> in how to um, create that understanding. One of the sort of most um, ambitious, maybe dramatic, projects you've worked on with people, with music, with big ideas, has been at the Stedelijk Museum. I was asked to create a big performance to open the Stedelijk Museum. It was very important at that instance for me to work with young people and a whole generation for whom the museum had been closed. So alles om me heen veranderen of verander ik? Want als ik vooruit kijk, dan zie ik zoveel richtingen en zoveel mensen. Ik hoop dat deze mensen zullen vechten voor verandering, zolang ze maar niet de dingen die ons lief zijn kapot maken. One of the girls who gave the speech, which is also a big motivation to this residence, she, she, said, she says, we've got so many big ideas, so many ideals, but like, they're not doing anything. And, and she kind of said, um, I want things to change, but I don't even know what there is to change anymore. We een groep worden van allemaal verschillende mensen en niet de groep zijn van allemaal dezelfde mensen. What do we hope to become? 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 A future that always remains. You're working with David Andrews. Yeah. Can you tell us about how you first met David? I was here in Sheffield doing a project called Love in Uganda, which was trying to get churches to proclaim we must protect all love um, as a statement against an uh, anti-homosexual bill. And I didn't actually get a church to say those words, but I instead passed a church and saw the posters of David. I was so astonished to see handwritten words suddenly. When you're so used to seeing advertisement, all of this stuff, and there was just this incredible human accountability somehow to his work. And, and I was not interested so much in a, a nostalgic way that this was a, an old-fashioned craft, but that there was someone really putting these words out there. In many ways, I feel there is a connection between me and David in what we have done, because David has predominantly written the words of others. He has given a, a piece of a text or uh, something and then he transforms that and in a way I see my own position a bit as an artist but I've always wanted to be of service or a channel to something it never felt it felt problematic just to 
to you know be in my room and say hey to the art this is what I've got to say um, so I felt a very strong relationship in our own histories and it's been a real dialogue which has grown over the last three years and in a real understanding of his also relationship to language and text. You often work with young people, with older people, with co different communities and when you're in Sheffield part of what you want to do is um, not just you and David work together but you want to bring together a whole range of different people to work with you. Yeah. For here in Sheffield um, it seemed very obvious to really run with thinking about where David's position, also in the city, but also as someone um, in a particular generation, someone who was born in the 40s of the war. I'm very fascinated by the position of that generation in relation to David's cra uh, craft and his voice. At the moment I'm describing it as a group of elders. It's a bit problematic to find a word which articulates age in a way because very different discrepancies or taboos, but elders were one I keep going back to rather than seniors. And I hope to work with them as a real um, a resource of an abundance of knowledge and of wisdom. In the traditional framework, elders were really used and utilised for that wisdom. And um, so that's kind of a core basis of why elders here in Sheffield. Rory, what can people expect to see in the galleries? Because you're going to be meeting with these groups of elders. Yeah. Will people be able to join in with those? But also, what else, what else is going to be going on in the gallery spaces? Well, I perceive it as a very much um, an evolving thing, and I'm very interested, actually, in, in the, the concept of an exhibition, which changes constantly. We're very used to fixed. So in terms of working with the elders, I think it will start gradually as a process which will come m more and more public. And as that um, takes place, David, I perceive, will be very much the person who will um, be almost like the... Or the oracle. The oracle, in which text or words or um, understandings of the central question which I really hope to ask, which is how do we radically enable a better future? And how we articulate that with words, but in that process, more and more of the gallery will fill up um, and become a kind of living text. Not as a library or in an archival sense, but a living thing or a living organism. You are tackling these huge subjects like let us protect all love <laughs> and how do we radically enable a better future? Um, these are not simple, single issue um, problems. These are huge, global, hu humanity style problems. Well, I feel it's very natural in my sight to think kind of um, mac no, is it macro? Mm -hmm. Yeah, macro. As an artist, I mean, I'm an idealist. In terms of my own critical reflection on that, of thinking big, I do feel that there is this complete fear. I'm going to swear, being afraid of the real shit. Like, when, when I first work with people, the first question I usually ask is, what are the five most important things to you in your life? So you really cut to the core. It can be problematic to really expose what is important and to... Um, say, yeah, well, this isn't right. And in that urgency, it does go to the bigger question. So in terms of how I relate to asking a question like, how do we protect all love? You take a question and then you go in to maybe the specifics, just in the sense that, for me, the feminist phrase, the personal is political. Those big questions are personal and very, um, specifically orientated if we give time to meditate upon them.